everyone, it's Heather here at Lars. Today we're gonna to be covering a tough subject and that is the loss of an animal. But we wanna cover this because we wanna let you guys know that one, uh, we're with you. Um, we feel your pain, we understand the pain of losing an animal. And also we wanna be able to provide resources for you guys um, to be able to deal with the loss of a pet. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's get right into it. I have people reach out to me regularly saying, how do you deal with that? And I can honestly say there's no good way to deal with the loss of a pet. Um, I would like to tell you about my first bearded dragon. His name was Athos and he was absolutely amazing. He was one of the first full-size lizards that I got uh, after I was out and living on my own. He was my baby. He came absolutely everywhere with me. He came on vacations with me. He came to Thanksgiving dinners with me. He was like a child for me. He was a very special guy. He would do really funny things like playing hide and seek. Um, I remember the specific time and I threw my back out and I laid down on the floor of my living room and I just, I couldn't move. I couldn't get myself up off the floor. And the way that his enclosure was positioned he was right next to me and we had this big platform that was on top. It was a four by two um, piece of wood that came out that allowed him to kind of see everything that was going on in the home. And I remember laughing because he would continually, as I was laying on the floor, come over and poke his little head down and tilt his little head like he was checking on me to make sure that I was still okay. He was an absolute character. Um, so he passed away uh, very shortly after the rescue was founded. He did accompany me to some of our initial presentations as our educational lizard. Uh, at the time when he passed away, science and medicine, veterinary medicine, had not made it so far as we are today. You know, today we see bearded dragons that are, are born in renal failure. They have, you know, or kidney issues. They have gout. Um, they have muscular dystrophy. Uh, they have cancer now. Um, they have adenovirus. All of these sort of things that bearded dragons can contract. And the veterinarian that I took him to at the time when I knew it was getting close and I was just trying to save his life. I was syringe feeding him, uh, making sure that he was comfortable. I had taken him to the veterinarian. And at that time, the illness that he had was blamed on metabolic bone disease. I have since found out since doing a lot of research into bearded dragons that he most likely died from cancer. So another animal that I became really, really attached to at the rescue and she uh, served us here at the rescue as an educational bird for I think it was around four years that we were using her for an educational bird. Um, her name was Bernie. She was a blue and gold macaw. And Bernie and I hit it off right away. We just clicked. She was my girl. Uh, she was the girl that, you know, when I get to the point where I'm ready to retire, she was the girl that was going to come with me and, you know, live in a warm tropical place. And she was always into everything. She followed me around at the rescue. It was entertaining, constantly entertaining with her. I woke up and got to the rescue on a Sunday morning and I noticed that she was not acting like herself. She was acting 
a little bit lethargic. She was doing a really slow head bob sort of thing. I made the decision to drive down to the University of Madison Small Animal Species Veterinary Clinic. And um, upon initial exam, uh, she was not doing well and they needed to run tests on her and in the condition that she was in when I brought her down, it was not a good spot for her to be undergoing all of these tests. So what they did is they took her back. When I said goodbye to her, she was in an incubator. Um, I was able to put my arm through the incubator and she came to me right away. And she stepped up on my arm in the incubator and she did not want to let go. And I did everything that I could to keep from crying in front of her because I didn't want her to see that I was emotional and I just kept saying I'm not ready to lose her I'm not ready to lose her and eventually I pulled my arm out of the incubator and turned around and that was the last time I ever saw her the veterinarians were able to run tests on Bernie on Monday to try to figure out what was going on so they ran the test and did find out that she had a weak heart. Once they found out that her heart wasn't operating like it should, uh, they put her on medication to try to reverse what was going on with her. It was about an hour and a half after I received the call from the veterinarian saying that they were starting her on the medication for her heart and it was a very hasty call from the veterinarian saying that she had gone into arrest and per a prior request that I made, they were performing CPR and the veterinarian recommended at that point that CPR be stopped. She ended up passing on that Monday at approximately 4.35 in the afternoon. We don't like to, you know, animals are animals and people are people, and we don't like to anthropomorphize and put those human attributes to an animal. But it happens, right? Because they're all so special, they're all so unique, they all have their different personalities. Everyone grieves in their own way about an animal passing. Something that has helped me is just remembering all the good times. All the good times with the animal. And really focusing on that, really changing your mindset, not to surround the events that led to their death you know we always question ourselves are we doing the right thing or did we do everything that we should and we're constantly receiving reassurance from veterinarians that we are indeed doing everything that we can for these animals um it doesn't make it any less painful when they pass away but i found this story about an african gray and this African gray belonged to a husband and the husband had a wife and the African gray was the husband's bird. And after the husband passed away, this African gray was pushed outside from its home and it was kept in a cage um, surrounded by feral cats. Um, it was provided food and water, but they were pretty dirty from what I read in the story. And this lady, to make a long story short, ended up asking if she could have the bird from the person, from the wife whose husband was deceased. And the wife said, yes, absolutely. It's either you or the needle tomorrow. So she had every intent of um, putting down that bird. And this lady 
took in the bird and she and her husband worked with the bird and at that point the bird had absolutely no reason to trust people but for some reason she the bird trusted them and eventually I think she said it was two and a half years down the road that bird passed away and it's a really touching story because it doesn't focus on the fact that the bird was kept in such horrible conditions um, what it did focus on is the love that they gave that bird and the life that they were able to provide for that bird before it passed away when you're working with rescue animals you don't know what you're getting you don't know how sick that animal is um, all you have to do is love them sometimes that's all you can do thanks for watching everyone and if you or a loved one is experiencing difficulties with the loss of an animal please check out the website that's appearing on this screen right now and hopefully get some help um, for dealing with that loss. And just as always, we are always here for you guys. You can always feel free to reach out to us either by our Facebook page or via email. Have a great day.